Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking fishing knots. Tim and I have three main knots that we use for all of our bass fishing needs and today we're going to teach you exactly how we tie them, what we use each knot for, and a little bit more about the lines themselves. Come along. We're headed in to meet Tim right now so we can get this started. Now this is actually part two. Yesterday we ran a video explaining the different lines themselves and what each one was for. It's a very in-depth video about monofilament, fluorocarbon, and braided line. When to use them, what leader materials to use, and how to be most effective with your time on the water. Right now we're going in for part two to sit down and actually tie the three knots. We're tying a blood knot, a palomar, and a twist to a palomar, as well as a San Diego jam knot with a little twist to that San Diego jam. This should be good, let's go. The first knot that we're going to tie is a palomar. A palomar is your main do everything knot in bass fishing. The way you tie that knot is we go through the eyelet, I'm going to turn it over here. So we're through the eyelet and back through. So on one side, I have my two lines. On the other side, I have the loop. We take the two lines and the loop and we tie an overhand knot in the line. So now you have an overhand knot, loop on one side, two lines on the other. We take the hook itself and put it through the loop and we pull it tight. Now when you pull it tight, be mindful that your main line and your tag line both come out of the same side of the loop. If they come out on opposite sides, you have a slip knot. But if they're on the same side, you have a palomar and it is a very strong knot. We use this knot for everything. We'll cut the tag end off, and that knot is ready to go. The only variation to that knot is if we're tying it in straight braided line. In straight braided line, we go through the eye, back around, through the eye again, then we go back through and we complete the knot as normal. So what that does is it leaves an extra loop of material. So we have our loop on this side, our two lines on this side, and an extra loop of material around the eye itself. With braided line, that extra loop of material will help the braided line bite on itself and keep it from slipping because braid is made of a slicker material. If you tie a standard Palomar, it can pull through, but with just that extra loop and then completing your normal Palomar with your overhand knot and then putting your hook through the loop and pulling tight, you have a good strong knot that will hold. And then of course, if we were actually fishing these knots, every time you cinch a knot, that knot needs to be wet. Put a little spit on it, put some water on it, whatever you need to do, but keep it wet because lines, whether it's mono or fluoro, can be burned when you cinch them. There's heat there and it will literally burn that line and cause it to weaken, especially with fluorocarbon. The second knot that we're going to tie is a San Diego jam. Now the San Diego jam is a knot that we began using for swim bait fishing. We used it in 30 pound mono or heavier originally. We've since discovered that it works in all of our lines. We use it all the way down into the light lines. The benefit of this knot is that you use a lot less line to tie it. The Palomar requires that the hook or the lure be passed through a loop. And if the lure is large, the loop is large and you lose a lot of line, which is a big deal if you're using leader because your leader is a fixed length and it gets shorter every time you tie it. So a San Diego jam knot, we put the line through our eye, 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up the line so our lines are parallel. And ultimately we're going to turn and loop back down. Now in order to do that, I use my finger. I put the line and loop it around my finger so that I'm holding a loop. Then I come back down and I go around both of my main line. So I'll do that again. I come up and I'm gonna wrap around both lines. I do that seven times around the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I take my tag end and I put it through the loop that my two lines created right above the hook or above the lure. And then I'm gonna take that same tag, go back up to the top of the knot and put it through the loop that I created with my finger. Now the most difficult part of a San Diego jam is cinching it up properly. The easiest way to do it is to twist it as you cinch. So I'm going to take the same hand and hold my tag. With my other hand, I'm going to push that knot up and twist it as I go. Put my tag through my loop, continue to cinch and twist as I go. If you're not twisting that knot, see now it's just a cinch or it's just a slide so I can loosen it and tighten it. But once it's tight, it's very tight. Go ahead and lock it down. If I'm not twisting as I'm cinching it up, the loops tend to jump over each other. Cut this tag off. Now the nice thing with the San Diego jam knot is much like the next knot, the blood knot, I can look right at the knot and see my seven loops stacked up perfectly. I can see with my eyes that this knot is tied correctly. If it's not tied correctly, I cut it off and start over. There's no question whether or not you have a good knot. Again, you need to wet your line, of course, if you're actually going to be fishing with this knot that you're cinching up. Now, switching to braided line, just like the Palomar, the only difference is that when I come through for my initial loop, I'll put a second loop around that eyelet before I go up and do my twist down. That extra loop gives that braid a little more to bite on and secure that knot. Now the third knot that we use is called a blood knot. This is the knot we use to connect braided line to leader material. This is what we'll use to connect braided line to mono or braided line to fluoro. But in this case, because we want the knot to be visible for you, we're tying together two different color braided lines. So this darker braid is going to represent your leader material. If the lines are similar in size, this knot is very simple. What we're going to do that deviates from the norm with the blood knot is we're going to go nine loops in each direction if your lines are similar in size. So I cross my lines and I pin the center point with my finger. Now this line is going to go nine loops up this way, this line nine loops the opposite direction. So we'll go this one first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I lay it back through that middle point that I'm holding. And then I hold it again. The other line, our leader material, it's going to go nine loops up the main line, then back through center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then it's going to cross back through center. Notice I pinned the center so that I had an open hole there. If you do this correctly, You'll have nine loops spiraling one direction, nine loops spiraling the opposite direction, and then they both pass through the same center point going opposite directions. They cross. I'm going to cinch this knot down and show you what that looks like. What I love about a blood knot is one, it is very easy to tie. Two, it is very easy to see that you have done it correctly. The blood knot is not the strongest knot in fishing. There are stronger knots. 
but they are much more difficult to tie. And in some cases, you can't easily see if you've done it right, like you can with a blood knot. So the reason we choose a blood knot is that it is plenty strong and you can tell right away whether or not you have a good knot. So nine loops up one way, nine loops the other way going opposite direction. So this one's going this way, this one's going this way, then crossed back through center. And if the knot's done correctly, I see all my loops and my two tag ends stick out perfectly opposite one another. If they come out the same side, it's done wrong. If they come out different parts of the knot, it's done wrong. They need to come out perfectly out opposite sides of the knot, just like that. It's a very simple knot to tie. When tying connection knots, the heavier the line, it is typically very, very easy to tie the knot. As your knots, or excuse me, as the lines get lighter, it becomes more difficult because you can fray and damage the knot as you go. You can fray the braided line or you can cut the fluoro or mono. So these two lines that I just tied successfully are actually dissimilar. The lighter line is 65 pound braid. The darker line is 40 pound braid and their diameter is quite different. In the case that this was a mono or a fluoro, you might be talking about a 20 or a 30 or a 40 pound braid trying to tie to a six or an eight or a 10 pound fluorocarbon. In the event that it's not working, what you do is you continue with the nine loops on the braided side, six, seven, eight, and nine. Give myself a little more line here. Cross that center point. But then on my leader material side, fluoro or mono normally, of course here we're still using braid, I go less loops. But the less loops you do, the weaker that line will potentially become, or that connection will become. So I'll only go maybe six or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put it through there. Go ahead and cinch it up. Of course, you would wet that knot. There's a good, clean knot. Nine loops on one side, six on the other. So I will always start with nine and nine because that's my strongest knot and I trust it the most. But as you go to lighter lines and you begin to have problems getting them to cinch down correctly, you can go to nine and eight, nine and seven, nine and six. If I get there and it still won't tie, I drop my main line, my braid side down to seven, and I go seven and seven, seven and six, seven and five, as I get into the ultra light line. So maybe I'm tying a 10 pound braid to a four pound fluorocarbon. I'm going to end up with seven loops on my braid, five loops on my fluorocarbon to cinch that knot down. Start with nine and nine, drop down from there, but you always want to maintain more loops on the braided main line than on your mono or fluoro leader as you drop down. Always have more loops in the braid than in the fluoro or mono. That's it. Those are the three knots that we tie for all of our bass fishing needs. It's very simple. Down in the video description, we're going to link you the video from yesterday showing all the information on the different lines that we use, which fluorocarbons, which monos, which braids, which leader materials to go with these connection knots. And then we'll link the specific lines as well to make it really easy for you. But those are the three knots that we tie. The Palomar, the San Diego Jam, and the Blood Knot with those two, well really three variations. Each one has a variation as you use a different style of line, but three knots that are very simple to learn that will get you through all of your fishing. That's all we use for bass fishing, and as we travel fish for other species, we use those same exact knots. They work perfectly for all of our applications. We hope this video helps you. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, Turn on that little bell for notifications so you know every time you get a new video. Just like this, it was an unscheduled bonus video. Without notifications, you won't even know that it happened. 
If you guys enjoyed the video, again, hit that like button, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day.